This is a Brahma controller presentation. So as you will see, this is the Brahma uh, controller and um, what you will have here, we have the gas valve number one, the gas valve number two, you have the fan and then you have this uh, proven switch connections. Now guys, before you buy a new Brahma controller, if the Brahma doesn't work, just look at this uh, fuse and I will show to you where the fuse it is and how can you, you can replace it. It's quite easy. If by mistake when you are servicing the fan, you make a short circuit between life and neutral here, if this is, this is not supposed to be activated by the way. But if the fan is running, because I know some crazy technician out there and they play with the fan while the Brahma is activated, if you catch the moment when the fan is purging and you make a short circuit, you blow up the fuse right here. If the gas valve while they working, they get a broken insulation or whatever, you make a short circuit, you blow up the fuse. Then if the fan uh, got a big short circuit inside because the winding uh, will uh, break or something, again, you can blow up the fuse and this is uh, the same with the gas valve solenoids. So basically the first thing if the fan, is, uh, if the system is not working, you need to check this fuse. And uh, how are you going to do that? I opened this by the way, uh, because I want to show you how it is inside. But you don't have to open this to, to change the fuse. You just have to pull this uh, fuse out. Uh, I'll, I'll show you after anyway. So, so far, you don't have to do this by the way. I do this because I want to show you how this one looks inside. As you'll see, this electronic circuit um, can have some dry joints where the soldering might not touch the electronic part. Sometimes they get in very hot or the quality of the joint and so on. Uh, I suggest that you only replace this uh, uh, fuse here. If the fuse is broken, use a multimeter and uh, you'll put the multimeter on continuity and then you will check the fuse. Uh, also, it's very important that you will uh, respect the fuse. Uh, capacity don't go with a stronger fuse because if you'll go with a bigger fuse then you can destroy other components inside because that that's why this fuse has got his uh, capacity to protect the system so if you put a bigger fuse the fuse will survive but uh, something else will uh, happen and uh, yeah so once you replace the fuse you will uh, put it back see it's got its location and i'll show you how this uh, works without to open this. So you'll put the fuse. So if you have a friend which knows electronic, I suggest that you ask him help a little bit to check um, if there are any dry joints and uh, to use, he can use a solder gun and then he can put, uh, he can just uh, repair the joint. Because sometimes the electronic parts might not touch the rest of the circuit board because it's sometimes getting very hot and if it's getting very hot, uh, obviously you will melt the uh, soldering and then it becomes a dry joint and then we have all kinds of problems. If the fuse is okay and no dry joints, I suggest that you stop at this point and you buy another one because um, interfering with the module, it's a little bit dangerous um, because you know, we have an ionization probe which read the flame presence to keep the gas valve open. And uh, if uh, by any chance uh, you will uh, mess up with the uh, ionization probe, which you see is right, it will be right in here. Let's see if I can see this clearer. Okay, so it's J5, as you'll see, the ionization probe. If you mess up with this one, uh, and uh, this one will not read the flame properly and the module will uh, think there's a flame it is not, will keep the gas valves open and uh, then a disaster can happen. Because if you reach the low flammable or the high flammable point, you will have some bad surprises. So now I'm going to put this back to show you how easy it would be. You don't have to open all this. The first thing you have to do, you don't have to open uh, all this. I open it just for you so you can see inside if you want to go a little bit further to investigate. But the first thing to do, you can, uh, as you'll see here, the first thing you can do is just to pull out the fuse, just like that. You don't have to do anything, right? You check the fuse, use your multimeter, check the fuse, and uh, if the fuse is all right, you'll put it back. 
and uh, you try the unit again if it works well you're lucky if it's not you can check for the giant joints or ultimately uh, if these two uh, intervention fail then you have to buy another one but as i'm saying sometimes for a fuse people are changing uh, the entire Brahma controller and that's a little bit expensive rather than paying 100 pounds or more than 100 pound uh, i suggest that you pay only um, 50p and with the 50p you can sort out your problem so it's a if you're a technician and you're frustrated check the fuse first and then check for dry joints and uh, this is it thank you very much dear friends i think a simulation say it all if you'll deal with the brachma controller the first step is to measure in between one and two life and neutral you're supposed to have 240 volts or 230 volts it's up to what country you're from or which country you are in, I'm sorry. Now then you have to check if um, the thermostat is close between number three and number seven. If you have all this, then the Brahma controller should initiate the fan by supplying power to number 11 and 12. Once the fan works, the proven switch just above number 10 and nine should be a closed circuit and that will prove the fan is working once all this is complete something is something else will happen the spark plug will be initiated and then the flame will come will come and the ionization probe will send the right input to the brachma controller which will hold the gas valves on that's it is what it is you might have some fault sometime you have to check in between 14 and 13 if the gas valve is all right the solenoid may be burned or 19 and 18 because you have two gas valves. you have to check both now look at the picture now first you have to apply power to number one life it can be through a switch through a safety switch through it can be anything it could be a safety device like overheat etc then the second stage it is to close the thermostat once you close the thermostat then the brachma controller will initiate the fan once the fan start running the spark plug come in and will try to initiate the flame then the gas valve will open and then you will have a flame the ionization probe will send the right information to the Brahma controller if the flame is right and then you will hit your home but what happens if you have a bad flame the ionization probe will not be able to send the right signal to the Brahma then the Brahma controller will turn off the gas valve and you'll have an alarm as you'll see it what you going to do with this you're going to reset the switch it means a short circuit between six and five and the light between four and six will go off now if you reset the system the brachma will try to reinitiate it five times the fan will purge then you have the ignition if the flame is not coming on you have to check the gas valves maybe they have a mechanical fault or the solenoid is burned or you have a problem on the circuit or you can have any other problem but i suggest you that you will take the thing step by step you will apply power between 1 and 2, you will close the circuit between 3 and 7, you will short circuit 5 and 6, maybe you have a switch to reset the unit, then if the fan is initiated, you have to have power between 12 and 11, if the fan runs, it means the Brahma controller initiated, then you check if you have short circuit between 10 and 9, because this is the proven switch. If that works, then the spark plug should come into and then the gas valve should open it is as simple as such nothing complicated thank you very much and i'll see you again